amazing creatures in the entire Bible. And if you got your Bibles, keep them in your lap there. We'll start in 2 Kings in a minute, so you can have you start finding your place there. That's the first time they actually show up. And uh, we'll look at them here in just a minute. And they are, they are called uh, horses of fire. And these are celestial creatures. The word celestial creature is not in the Bible, but for lack of a better term, we, we use that. Celestial obviously means uh, positioned or residing in the heavens. Some that don't dwell on earth, celestial. Um, and so these, these, these animals or creatures, I should say, live in heaven. I've been giving you all these classes of, uh, of life classes in the Bible, and we really stirred up stink here a few weeks ago, them fallen angels, and where are fallen angels, what are fallen angels, what's the devil's angels. You know, a lot of people don't believe that. Jesus, you know, that's why the Lord made hell for the devil and his angels. That's what it says. And so uh, the devil has angels, and some of them are locked up, reserved in chains under the judgment. The ones that sinned back there in the days of Noah. And some became these Nephilim and these, 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 these giants, and the best you can figure it, demons are the spirits of those giants that did not drown in the flood that are out somewhere running around looking for a body to inhabit. And we went into all of that, that second, if you missed that second Sunday night in this, uh, you missed a detailed study of where demons come from, what are they, where, what about the giants, we're going to talk more about the giants, and if you meant those sons of God mix, mingling with the daughters of men, and produced a super race. There is evidence all over this world that there was at one time on this earth a, a race of superhuman beings. It's evident. I won't take time to go into it tonight. If you want to look at it, those study of giants in the Bible, and then those stones of Baal back. Baal, like Baal the devil, B-A-A-L-B-E-K. There are stones, exact squared stones, Somebody did them, you can tell somebody did it with a, hand, uh, with a with material, honest to goodness, as long as this building, that are big as a railroad car, weighing 1,600 tons. There are very few cranes in the world tonight that can lift 1,600 tons. They had no cranes. When you see science books and that shows 10,000 slaves with these big rocks on little logs, rolling them up a hill. You can laugh. It's funny. It's like Papa Smurf and Mama Smurf. Uh, a 1,600-ton rock would crush a log like it wasn't even there. And then the question comes up, why would they even do it to start with? Why would you want to make a rock so big you can't move it? Uh, somebody bigger and stronger than me and you made them rocks in Belva. Even, I think there's 90 ton stones in the Great Pyramid. 90 tons. And to, why would it do that? Why not just make ton, blocks you can work with? Because there was a bigger race here. Evidence all over the United States and all over the world of those things. Not just super strong, super smart, super intelligence, IQ, and everything. So when that started happening, God drowned that whole crowd out. By the way, have you ever wondered why the Lord put all them names in the Bible? You know why the Lord put them names in the Bible? To show you he preserved a pure bloodline without a mingling of them Nephilim in the bloodline that he was trying to preserve. So think about it. All these years people say, why does the Bible have all them names? Because they was, he was showing you the pure, there's a pure bloodline. And there's a record of it. Now tonight, we're going to study these creatures that live in heaven where God is, and we're just going to call them celestial, supernatural horses of fire. I want to show you what one would look like if you were to see it. Okay, here, get these choir lights here, and uh, let, me see if I, let me see if I can uh, find this horse here. Uh, and it would look something like uh, maybe this right here. Maybe that right there, you can see the... 
uh, it, the, the picture comes down here and it's got flames of fire coming up on them. The first thing you'll notice about that horse right there, it, it does not have wings. There's nothing in the Bible that said these horses have wings. Folklore and legend pictures them with flying wings. And, but the Bible don't. Just like angels. There's no angel in the Bible that has wings. None of them. Uh, every angel in the Bible is pictured as a young male. That's why he said they've entertained angels unaware. You could entertain an angel and not even know it was an angel. Right? You say, well, Brother Danny, it's all about how can they fly? They can fly without wings. I mean, you're going to fly without wings one day. We sure are. And the cherubim have wings. The seraphim have wings. But they are not angels, as we learned last week or week four sometime. Now, tonight, let's talk about uh, these things here. You, that, that thing right there is designed... Uh, and that is only like an earthly horse use, looks. A earthly horse is probably in the image of them, like man was made in the image of God, and then, and then man fell, and so we're not a real good image of him right now. And that's probably true with these things. The, earth, the heavenly horses are probably like that times 10,000, and they can fly, and they're, they're a fire. They got fire coming out around them and in front of them. Just like a, just like a, a something's going in front of them, like a flame devoureth before them, is what the Bible says. I'll show you that in a minute. But a horse is an unusual thing. Did you ever notice, see how, you see how God designed a horse? That little natural little seat right there? Dogs don't have that because you don't supposed to ride dogs. Cows don't have that. Cows can't run like horses can. I think a cow can run maybe 20 miles an hour or something like that. A horse can run up to 55 miles an hour and at a good hard run, some of them 40, them race horses and stuff, 35 and 40 miles an hour. Isn't it funny how God made a little place there for them to run? And these things are made to, made to ride. They're not made to eat. I mean, some people do. Uh, and a lot of, a lot of play, uh, you, you eat cows, you ride horses <laughs> in, in a civilized country. <laughs> uh, now, of course, there's people eating horse here in America. Uh, you know, you know, horse burger or horse steak or whatever. I don't think I've ever had it, but it's like everything else tastes like chicken. <laughs> That's what they say about rattlesnake and turtle and everything else. Tastes like chicken. Uh, but anyway, uh, them things are, are they're, 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 there's something... Honest to goodness, there's something everybody loves about horses. Isn't that true? You ever seen a horse when they're running real hard and it'll show it in slow motion? Man, I'm telling you, that's art. It's like the way they're, and, and, their, and their, their seat just stays, like the saddle stays level. Now, I've rode a horse a few times. I used to have one when I was young and I woke up one day and it was gone. Daddy sold it. And that, that's the way everything was around the house. We, we'd like something one time. We woke up, whatever happened to it? Like he'd done traded it off to something. And uh, uh, he'd, uh, uh, I, I remember walking on a horse, the horse walking, and I was sitting on it, it was walking, and it was just clomp, 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 clomp. And then when you gig them a little bit, they, what's the next thing? They go into what? A trot. That ain't fun. You ever rode, you ever rode on a horse and it trotting? It's just boom, 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 boom. It'll shake your guts out. It's like going to a chiropractor, brother. I mean, it goes boom, 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 boom. And then if you can get past that trot into that gallop, it smooths out. Now, we have some professional horse riders here tonight that's far more greater to comment on that than I. Kerrigan, she is a professional horse rider. I don't know if y'all know that about her. Uh, just make sure you don't break them fingers like your brother. Because uh, we need them on the piano. Uh, but... Uh, uh, and then Miss B over there, she's a famous horse rider. Uh, she was in a lot of the Roy Rogers movies uh, back, back years ago. And uh, I know Miss Terry Marlowe, she's probably watching, is a famous horse rider. I've never been much for horses. I always wanted a motorcycle because I rode a motorcycle when I was young because a horse got a mind of its own. I didn't trust them things. They're, they're too jittery. They jump, I, I, they jump like that, you know, and everything. They'll kick your brains out, buddy, uh, if, you, if, you, if, you ain't, if you ain't careful. But horses are truly, truly a fascinating. How many of you have ever been a kid that didn't like horses? How many of you boys and girls have ever 
rode a horse, a real horse. Would you raise your hand, please? See, everybody in here, every, just about everybody in here. Wasn't it? It's always fun. All the kids, I want to ride a horse, I want to ride a horse, I want to ride a horse. You know, and even them little ones that go around and around and around at, at the mall, at the ride, that go up and down. Them like that. They're pretty fun to ride. Uh, we rode one not too long ago. Uh, me and Kelly, all of us rode one somewhere uh, over in Gatlinburg somewhere. But anyway, uh, there's some famous horses and I'll name off a few famous horses tonight and see if you, see if you can recognize any of these. Uh, there was a man of war, and uh, one of the most famous horses I've ever remember hearing of is Trigger. Roy Rogers' horse, Trigger. But it, uh, back in them days, a man and his horse had a special bond. Sure did. Them Pony Express days that I preach about, uh, they had a bond with their horse. And a lot of times they hate, had to put them down. And they'd fall off a cliff or something, break their leg or something, and they'd take all them guys to do to shoot that thing. And they'd have to shoot it and put it out of its misery. And, and, then, uh, and then there's uh, Silver. How's, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, who's that guy? Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger. Oh, his name was Silver. And then, uh, uh, let's see what else I wrote down here. Mr. Ed. He was a famous horse. Uh, uh, you know, some of you, how many of you kids do not know who Mr. Ed is? Would you raise your hand? Okay, so I mean, you know, that's the old black and white. When I was a little kid, we watched a horse is a horse, of course, of course, unless the name of the horse, of course, is the famous Mr. Ed, you know, and Mr. Ed was this horse that could talk, but nobody knew it, but he's, but he's the guy that, who is it? Wilbur, that's him, that's him, I remember that. Nobody knew it, but Wilbur, and then when, when people would, uh, when people would uh, leave the house, Mr. Ed would say, now, that's not right, what they're doing. They're just, quit, Mr. Ed. They're going to find out you can talk, you know, just stupid stuff like that. And uh, we used to get a kick out of Mr. Ed, but he had this wisdom, you know. He knew the answer. He could solve the problems uh, and, and figure out stuff, and he was real wise and everything. And, of course, that, that was baloney. Uh, and then, but all those great men, Seabiscuit, how about that? How about that? Kids know who Seabiscuit is, Right. And then uh, John Wesley rode horses all his ministry. Sheffy, Robert Sheffy, the great circuit riding Methodist preacher, rode horses all his ministry. Uh, they, uh, all the old time circuit riding Methodist Bible preachers rode horses. That's what built the churches across these mountains, the Appalachian Trail, all up through Big Stone Gap, West Virginia, Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, is circuit riding old Methodist preachers and Baptist preachers that preached. They carried, they carried two books with them. Uh, well, they carried three books. They carried your pocketbook, your song book, and the King James Bible. That's what they had. That's all they had. And they went from town to town and they preached the word of God and their horses served them well. So then we come to this thing of, uh, of uh, what we use now is in, in horsepower. Horsepower. It's funny that to this day in 2020, we still measure stuff in the terms of horsepower. How many of y'all know what a horsepower is? I mean, you've heard of it. Do you know what horsepower is? Let me explain it to you. To all you kids here, you don't, you don't even learn much. I don't know if you learn this at school or not, but uh, a horsepower is this. If I can understand this right, it is how, how able to lift 550 pounds one foot off the ground. Some weighed 550 pounds right here, like this flower, and I can lift it one foot. It takes one horsepower to lift 550 pounds, one foot off of the ground. And that is a horsepower. Now, I, 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 according to that, I, I don't know. The James Watt is the one that figured out the steam engine, and that's where they, they call Watt. He, he got named Watts. So many Watts and heat and stuff like that. BTUs, 23,000 BTUs, stuff like that. All that's figured in, in uh, torque and twist and tons and stuff like that. Now, they have... Uh, they have a, uh, a Mustang, that's a cart named after a horse, by the way, uh, with 760 horsepower. And, that is, and if you took 550 pounds and lifted it up one foot, 760 of that, that's a strong motor. Isn't that right, Jeremy? Is that right? Is that the st strongest Mustang? Uh, he's got one. Is it sitting out there? Uh, he's going to offer free rides for it here for the fall festival. Uh, but anyway, them, them doggone things will burn the tires off of a car. I'm not kidding you. Now, me personally, 
I question. They, they, the, the fastest street cars in the world, one of them is a Bugatti that'll do 304 miles an hour, street legal car. Why would anybody want a car legal on the road you can go 304 miles an hour in? You just want to go to jail, I guess. I mean, if you've got a car that'll do 300 miles an hour, you're not going to be happy doing 55, idling, uh, you know, coasting. I mean, you put up a, a, hunt, a thousand RPM, it'll jerk out from under you. Like that right there. Me personally, I have a hard time believing that. I have a hard time believing that a 1,200 horsepower car is really as strong as 1,200 horses. I don't know if that's true or not. Help me if it is. I have a hard time believing that. 1,200 horses, brother. If you had 1,200 horses out here in this parking lot and hooked a rope, they jerk this building off of this slab. I, them 1,200 horses, brother, I mean, could pull something down. That's strong. But they measure it in that somehow. I don't know. 1,163 horsepower, 233 miles an hour. 1,200 horsepower, 270 miles an hour. 1,350 horsepower, 277 miles per hour. Now, what's the use of horses in the Bible? Most of the used horses in the Bible were, were armies, were fighting armies. It wasn't just for pleasure riding. It wasn't for trick riding. It wasn't for Kentucky Derby. It wasn't for the, them, and them beer horses, them big old beer horses. They hijacked, what do you call Clydesdale. Yeah, them. it wasn't for them things. It wasn't for Arabian race horses. It was for safety and protecting your land and your family and your, your call from, from the enemy. They were kept for war. Kings and princes rode them. And they were swift. And God compares it to them sometimes. So in, with that in mind, all I've talked about so far is earthly horses. Now let's look at these heavenly ones. 2 Kings chapter 2, if you look at your Bible there tonight, look in 2 Kings chapter 2. This is an amazing story. You ever look at this story? And look at verse number 11. 2 Kings 2.11, And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire. Were the horses made out of fire? Were the horses just glorified and fire coming out from around them like this picture? I don't know. Horses of fire. And parted them asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Now hold your finger right there. Here, God taking Elijah to heaven in the Old Testament picture of one of the raptures. And God told Elijah, I'm going to come and get you. And he told Elisha, if you see him, he told Elisha, if you see me on the day, you know that story. If you see me when I'm took up, I'll get a double portion of your spirit on me and all that stuff. Well, here's Elijah walking one day and he said, all right, I'm ready, Lord. Nothing like this had ever happened before, and as far as I know, never happened since, a chariot of fire come down. That's where all them old songs, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, turn the lights back on, Eric, I'll get this off. Sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Well, I looked out the window, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. Well, a band of angels coming after me. I don't know if it really works like that or not. But uh, some of them old spirituals like that was good old songs. And the, and the chariot came down, and Elisha went, oh, my God. And chariots and horses of fire, wouldn't you like to have seen that? And these fiery horses come down through the sky and said, get in, Elijah. And Elijah got in that chariot. Boom, took off back up through the sky. You say, preacher, you really believe that? Yes, sir, I believe that literally happened. No problem with the Lord. That ain't no problem with the Lord. Sending down a chariot of fire and picking up Elijah. Now look at verse 12. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Elisha saw the horses also. Uh, horses in history are over 100 times in the Bible. They're mentioned in connection with strength, power, luxury, by the way. Uh, there was a time when you're, luck, you're a rich person if you got a horse. And glory. God made them. 
They did not evolve. Some of them are measured by hands. Don't they measure horses by hand? So many hands high, like 20 or something like that, them big old horses. Uh, I don't know, but uh, God made them like that. And by the way, they are the only animal that's mentioned as an animal here on earth being in heaven. Them other things we preached about last week, they ain't nothing like that on earth with four different faces and weird looking stuff like that. The horse and, it's, and a celestial horse is the only animal that's mentioned like that. Now let's look at it again here tonight. There, there's, there's some weird ones in the Bible. Take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 9. Now we're going to do a little Bible study here. I'm, I'm not preaching like normal. I'm just doing a little lesson here. Revelation chapter 9. Let me show you some weird looking uh, creatures that uh, plane. If there's fallen angels, there could be fallen horses. I don't know. Uh, they could be. I don't know. Look here in Revelation chapter number 9 and verse number uh, uh, 7, I guess. Uh, these locusts, these creatures come out of the earth, out of the bottomless pit. When that fifth angel opens the pit in verse 1, there, the pit is open. It's bottomless. You know why it's bottomless? Because it's inside the earth. And the inside of the earth is being like the inside of a dryer. If you put a ball of socks inside of a dryer, it just goes around and around and around like that. It's all sides, no bottom. The bottomless pit is inside this earth. And that's why I call it bottomless. It don't have no bottom. It's just like, it's like inside of a donut. It's all sides. And that's why the Bible said that the devil would be brought down to the sides of the pit. It has no bottom. Now, these creatures come out of there, and um, they are green peace people. They follow Kamala Harris and her beliefs of the, the AOC and them people. They should not hurt the grass nor any green thing. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Neither any tree, but those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. This during tribulation now. And look what it said. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. These things are going to come out of the pit and sting people, and it'll hurt for five months, and you can't die from it. In those days, verse 6, men shall seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Look at verse 7. And the shapes of the locust were like unto horses prepared unto battle. I don't know what kind of creature that is. And on their heads were, as it were, the crowns like gold. And their faces, look at it, were the faces of men. And they had hair like the hair of women. Lord, that's hair stern. <laughs> Twisted sister, how'd you get in there? That's, that's kiss. Look, it said they had a hair like women and a face like a man. Isn't it weird that that's a popular look nowadays? All tat, tat up. <laughs> all uh, tattooed on. I seen this guy, he had the tattoos all over his face, all over his nose, all over his lips, all over his body like this, and blacked his eyes out. And he was mad because he's a, he was a kindergarten teacher, and some of the parents complained because the kids were scared of him. Duh. And, 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 they, and they said, well, what'd they do? They let him teach first grade. Honest to goodness, I'm not lying. Why would you want to look like a demon? Why would anybody want to look like a demon? Because maybe you have a demon in you. I don't know. But that's what these things look like. They had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. So these things had tails like scorpions. These were not normal horses. They had wings coming out of the pit. They had stingers. They had faces like men. They had hair like women. I have no idea in the world what you call that except demon creatures, scorpions from hell. That's coming out during the tribulation. Now let me show you some more. Look at Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6, back there a couple of chapters. And look here, let me show you these other ones. These come out at the beginning of the great tribulation, of the tribulation period. The, these four horsemen, you've heard of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. These are four uh, guys that come out riding horses. The first one, we believe, is the Antichrist himself. 
in uh, chapter 6 and verse 1. Uh, uh, most, a lot of the old time commentators, even your old uh, Bible that a lot of the old preachers use, that old Thompson Chain Reference Bible, it said that's Jesus Christ coming on this white horse. Not this one, it's not. This is not Jesus Christ coming on this horse. A lot of different ways you know that. See verse 1, and when I saw when the Lamb, there's Jesus, opened the seals, he opened the seals, Jesus opened the seals so this character could come out. And I heard, as it were, the voice of noise of thunder, one of the four beasts say, Come and see. And I saw, behold, a white horse. That's horse number one. The Antichrist on him, he that sat on him had a bow, but no arrow. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer, to take over the world. That's the Antichrist. He's on a white horse. A white horse is the most rare type of horse you can find. There are hardly, hardly any completely. Most of the white horses you see, they're white horses. They ain't really white. They're, they're sort of pale looking, uh, uh, I don't know, a little, maybe almost beige a little bit, but they look white out there running around the field. Very few actually white horses. I read a little bit about it, and it says a very rare condition. Uh, like red hair. Somebody with really red hair is only like 2% of the population. Real red hair. Come Scotland and Ireland. There's one right there. And I found out that both parents, that's that, so that makes you special, Carrie, only 2% of the population. And only like 1% have green eyes. I don't know what make that makes us. I don't know, weirdos or something. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. These things are rare. So this guy comes out. And he comes on a white horse. Don't be fooled by it. Look what follows after. Verse 4. And there went out another horse that was red. You know what follows this horse? War, brother. War. And power was given unto him thereon to take peace from the earth. There's going to be a big war. According to the Bible, there are at least three big wars in the future. One at the beginning of the tribulation, one at the end of the tribulation, and one at the end of the millennium. At least three. And maybe a lot more before and between that. I don't know. But there's a big one. To take peace on the earth, they should kill one another, and is given a great sword. Verse 5. And when he'd opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. That, that black horse represents death. Death. And he said, uh, he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And uh, uh, famine, rather, famine. And, uh, and, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny. You know what that measure of wheat for a penny means? A penny in the New Testament represents a whole day's wages. That means there's coming a time in the future when a man will work all day long just to have enough money to eat. Won't be no extras, extra vacation time, another house, another car, another a measure of wheat for a penny and a measure of barley for a penny. It'll take everything you can win. And uh, Lord, the way we're going right now, you know, when, when all, these, when all these, these Democrats talk about, you know, the people are so dumb that believe that stuff. Uh, how can you be that dumb? I, you'd have to be blinded by the devil. Say, we're going to give you free college. We're going to give you free health care. People, have you not lived long enough in this world to know nothing's free? Nothing's free. There ain't one thing in this world free, and that's salvation, and it ain't cheap. Jesus paid a big price. There ain't nothing else free. These dumb kids come and saying, oh, they're going to give us free college, free college. No, they're not. Them colleges ain't going to work for free. Them professors don't work for free. You know what's going to pay for it, don't you? Us. Taxes. We're going to wind up paying the health care. We're going to wind up paying. I ain't a political message tonight. I'll talk about it before it's over with probably uh, in the next few weeks. But let me tell you something, brother. This time's going to be so bad, you'd work all day long just for enough have food on your table to eat one day. My Lord, what a time. And then look at this fourth one. 
And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. He represents death. And his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. Now, if it's fourth part of the world, geographically, that's a big chunk. And if it's the fourth part of the population, that's two billion people. Two billion. You talk about a you talk about a pandemic. We're talking about a worldwide thing where a third of the population of this world is going to die. Verse eight, and power is given them a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Now there's some weird horses there. Let me show you some good ones. You see the good ones? Let's turn to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Now, I'm going to tell you something, brother. We're going to meet the Lord. And when we go meet the Lord, we're going to have what they call the marriage supper of the Lamb. And we're going to get married. The church is not the bride of Christ. Yeah, I mean, we're not married to him. We're engaged. We're in his spouse. This is our engagement time. We're not married to Jesus yet. See, God, the Father's wife, is Israel. God, the Son's wife, is the church. John the Baptist is the best man at the wedding. And we're going to be getting the wrinkles ironed out of our wedding garment, getting all fixed up just like a bride does for her wedding, while all you know what's breaking loose down here. And we're getting our wedding garments all ironed out and everything all pretty and everything. And then we're going to get married and have the marriage supper. You know what you do when you have a marriage supper? When you, when you get married, you go have a big supper. You have all the guests in. That's why he said, go out in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Not a bride. Guests. The bride's already there. Bride's already there. And that's why he said in Luke 12, 36, he said, be in the, watch of your Lord when he shall return from the wedding. When he comes back at the second advent, he's already married. And he brings, what you do when you get married? You have a big feast, you have all your friends in, and then you go on your honeymoon. You don't just go move in your big new house he'd been working on 2,000 years. You go on a 1,000-year honeymoon. Now, that's a honeymoon, brother. I mean, when, listen, a man marry a woman and take over the whole world for a 1,000 years, he's treating her right. And that's what we're going to get one of these days. We're the bride of Christ. He's going to come back. And let me show you, this is called the second advent. This is called the second part of the second coming. The first coming was in two parts, public, private and public. The second coming is in two parts, private and then public. So this is the second part of the second coming. It's public. Every eye shall see him. Look at Revelation chapter 19. When everything's bad and the devil thinks he's won and the devil thinks he's took over the world and everything's all hooked up and the devil thinks I've got them, I've got them. I'm going to send the whole world to hell. I'm winning. I'm going to win this thing. Look at verse number 11. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Revelation 19, 11. And I saw heaven opened. The first time heaven was opened is chapter 4, verse 1, by the way. Somebody went up. Second time it's open here, somebody come down. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Woo! Hallelujah. All of a sudden, a big white stallion, glorified, appears in the heavens, and he that sat upon him, it wasn't Antichrist this time. He wasn't going to conquer and be conquer, conquer this time. It said he was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, brother, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and he's name is called the Word of God. Ain't no doubt about who that is. That's the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And here's where we come. Look at verse, 20, look at verse 14. And the armies, we come with him. Which were in heaven, that's us already married and got on our wedding garment, followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen and clean white. Now, that means Miss Bessie's going to ride a white horse. Can't wait to see that. I, I can imagine it like, I, when, you know, when Dax and them race, I've never even been to really but one, one time see a real race. I, I hate to say that. I'm, I, I should do that. But, uh, uh, they, they get them things down, and there's 40, is that right, Carrie, 40? In them big races, 40 motorcycles, 
from right there, Lord, to about, probably about right here. I mean, they're just side by side. They're that close. And the road they got to go on probably ain't no bigger than this track. Ain't no bigger than this set of seats right here. Now, it don't take a genius to figure out 40 motorcycles can't go in a road that big. Something bad's going to happen. Don't take a genius to figure that out. It ain't if, it's when, right? I mean, just common sense. You can't cram 40 motorcycles, and every one of them got an ego, and every one of them got pride, and every one of them daddy fussing at them in a, in a little road that big. But they do this, I noticed they have these little, little bars right here, and they're sitting there like this, and they're all sitting there like this, and them daddies, every one of them, they all go around there, and they're, they're patting down like that's going to make a difference, you know. Patting down that little track, and putting it, that's really going to help them win. Uh, patting down it, making them a little piece of dirt about that big, and, and they're patting it down and everything, and they're talking to them, now you can do it, son, you can do it, you're the greatest, you're the best, you know. And then I know, I don't know how they know that. Do they have a clock that's counting down or something? How do they know when it's getting ready to... How do they know when you're getting ready to take off? You don't? Okay, okay. A card, somebody holds up a card, and I, them guys, and you know what they do right then? They put their head down, and go, and they're holding on the brakes, I imagine, and they're holding on the brakes with that thing wide open, brother. And when that bar goes down, bam, that shoots out of there, boy. I'm telling you, I'd like to do that. I would like to do that. Not with 39 others. But I'd like to try that. I, I, I ain't no fool. Uh, and let me uh, listen. I, I remember I, I remember seeing them going out like that. And I thought I see them race cars at them races. How they say, gentlemen, start your engines. I mean them things. Well, I, I tell you, it'll jar your soul, brother. I mean you can feel it shake the ground. And I can just imagine one of these days when all the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is up there and all their flaws are gone. Glory to God, we got our wedding garments on and and. The Lord says, saddle up, baby. Let's go. We're about ready to go on our honeymoon. And we get on there and say, Lord, I've never rode a horse in my life. Uh, can you imagine? Uh, and get on that thing. You, you can't get hurt. It's a glorified horse. And the Lord said, gentlemen, start your engines. And I'm telling you, them things will get up there and you'll get the reins like this. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't understand how it's going to go. But I'll be on a big white one. You'll be on a big white one. If you're saved, you're going to be right there with us. And the Lord's going to say how silver or something and he'll say giddy up amen I always thought that she'll be coming around the mountain <laughs> that's what I've always thought amen I said, she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes she'll be coming around the mountain she'll be coming around that's right brother that's that second advent when the Lord comes with them horses we come to take over we don't come to take sides we come to take over and the devil's kicked in, the, in, the, in the, the chain game for a thousand years. We will kill the old red rooster when she comes. Ha ha! We will kill the old red rooster when she comes. That's right. We'll kill the old red rooster. Throw the devil in hell. Amen. Amen. You say, what are we going to have to at the marriage level? We will have chicken and dumplings when she comes. We will have chicken and dumplings when she comes. Wait. Yeah, we're going to have chicken. You think we're going to have pizza? No, brother, we're going to have chicken and dumplings. Guarantee it. Woo! Big old dumplings that big. You can't get heartburn. You can't overeat. You can't not enjoy it. And then uh, they said, somebody said down here, a cry was made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. We will all go to meet her when she comes. See him? Whoever wrote that song, it must have been, I don't know. Uh, that old song says, we'll all go to meet her when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain, brother, and the Lord's coming back with the armies of heaven. Here's where it's going to go. I'll show you this, and I'm through. Turn back to the book of Joel. Joel, chapter 2 in the Old Testament. Look at the book of Joel. Amazing little book back there. A uh, small book toward the end of your uh, Old Testament. The book of Joel, chapter 2, gives you a detailed description of how this is going to be when we come back with the Lord on our horses, and, and, I'll, and I'll stop for tonight. Joel, chapter number 2. Look at, uh, blow you the trumpet in Zion. See verse 1? The day of the Lord cometh. You better remember when you study the Bible, the day of the Lord never just means one day. 
If you don't understand that, you'll get your Bible all confused. We say, what's going to happen on the day of the Lord? The day of the Lord is a time period. Uh, just like we're living in the, the day of this or the day of that, the day of Noah, the day of that day, and people say that day and time. We're not talking about just one day. You want me to prove it? Look at verse 2. A day of darkness and gloominess. gloominess. That ain't the rapture. That ain't the rapture. They, you don't have to be darkness and gloomy on the day of the rapture. All over the world. Thick darkness. But then, when this comes, a great people, here we come. See verse 2? And strong there hath not been ever the like Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter number 1. He said, when he comes in flaming fire, devouring his enemies. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. And nothing shall escape them. When he comes burning it up across the desert there. Verse 4. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. That's us. And as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots upon the tops of mountains, they shall, shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array, before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. That's the battle of Armageddon. That's it. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. You can't get hurt. You can't get wounded. Keep reading. They shall march everyone on his way. They shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Somebody stabbed you, you wouldn't feel it. You got a glorified body that can't hurt. Amen. Amen. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall like Joshua and them taking over Jericho. Climb upon the houses. They shall enter at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake. Earthquake at the end of the tribulation. Before them, the heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark at the end of the tribulation. The moon will be, sun, sun will be turned to blood. The sun will be dark. And the stars shall withdraw they're shining, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is ex very great, for he is strong and executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? There's your future. Your future is to go home and be the Lord one day and get everything straight. I heard a man say that with the Lord Jesus and us are going to have a little private conversation. I don't know if that's true or not. I've never thought about that, really. I've always thought, you know, we'd all be standing out there and he'd throw our good works in the fire like the judgment seat of Christ and everything that's good comes out and everything that's bad burns up and, uh, and, and that's the type of thing. But either way you look at it, we're going to get it all fixed up. We're going to get on our wedding garments, hop on our horse. The old preacher said it like this and I'm through. Come on, Miss Destin, play something. He said, I'm going to go meet my boss Suffer my loss, eat my supper, and crawl on my hoss. And that pretty well sums it up. <laughs> I'm going to go meet my boss. I'll suffer my loss. I'll eat my supper and climb on my hoss. What a future, man. What a future. When you got saved, you get on the little end of something big, buddy. God has big plans. Let's obey him. Do what we're supposed to. Let's stand by our heads for prayer tonight. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Danny, I want my future to be right and ready to meet the Lord. I want everything to be right with me and the Lord. I want to be ready to meet Him. Let's get in this altar tonight. And let's get in this altar tonight and, and say, Lord, Lord, I Holy mercy, what a future. What a future we've got. Let's obey the Lord tonight. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of God, that you'd touch every single heart here tonight. Lord, I'm glad for these promises that you've given us. Lord, we know we have a bright future. We know we're going to live and reign with you on this earth for 1,000 years and then live in that beautiful four-square gold city forever and ever and ever. 
Lord, I'm glad for this little lesson on horses tonight. I pray, God, that you'd help us, Lord, to live for you every day and serve you the way we wished we had one day when we're crawling on that white horse, getting ready to come back with you. Have you in our lives. God, get us ready for camp meeting. May your will be done in our hearts. Do what needs to be done. Change lives. Save souls at the camp meeting. Moving, moving, mighty, mighty Holy Ghost power. And whatever and however you do for us, we'll thank you and praise you for it. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Some still praying tonight. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Maybe you're here tonight and say, Preacher, I really need to get back in there and serve God. I'm backslid. I need to get back in there. Lord, have mercy. Life's too short to stay backslid. Too short. Let's do something for God while we can. Amen. 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 I want to be ready to meet him. I don't know about you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to be ready to meet him. I don't want nothing between me and the Lord. Nothing. I want nothing between me and the Lord. I want to be right in my heart. All right. All right. Now, next time, uh, Lord willing, I'm going to talk about uh, symbiotic life. And then that... Uh,